Good evening, everyone. I know you can't see my head. Sometimes I'm just too dang tall. <laughs> so just deal with a headless woman today. Um, it's going to rain tonight and it's getting cold tomorrow. So I am just working on splitting a little bit of wood. Tomorrow fire season starts. Fire in the stove starts. Um, this is terribly anticlimactic and I really love splitting wood with an axe, but I don't have the strength or the energy for it right now. So we're going to do it this way. And some of these pieces are so big that I can't even split them with a axe anyways. So I'll do this for a little bit and then I'll just natter on for a little bit. Right. The electricity is off. I shall be back. And we're back in business, I think. Yeah. yeah. I'm really sensitive to electricity and I want to be living off grid, so I just have the power flipped off to the house everything for the night and everything except what i absolutely need during the day so if i need to charge my phone then i'll just uh flip that breaker on it's so much more peaceful So what I'm doing, I have a really, really big wood stove, so I'm splitting one. This piece will go inside, half, I half it, and then I quarter it. And I have enough kindling for right now, so I'm just going to leave it at that. I really should turn this around so that I'm not, you can't see my head, but you could at least see my body or you could at least see what's happening here. <laughs> not tarped properly that's why I want to do a bunch it's supposed to rain all day tomorrow so might as well have some split this not quite far enough yet that's all right doing it a little differently because of the issues I've been having I would normally just pile let it pile all in the ground and then uh, pick it up from the ground and stack it but I don't want to bend down too much still so yeah making it work
This stuff is actually difficult to split with an axe anyways because um, pine and spruce are very knotty. And I don't know if it's just me and my woman muscles or if everyone finds it difficult, but... Pieces that are 16 inches, they're, they're doable, but these are like way bigger. So they're, they're nice and dry. Splitting wood when it's minus 40 out. That's cool. Cause then it just sort of, uh, it's you use, it splinters so much easier cause it's so cold and it sounds nice. Hey, Kosh, you having fun? has a knot in there somewhere. Okay, let's keep trying.
Oh, some of the stuff is so punky. Punky means that it uh, it disintegrates instead of splits. Like uh, it's just disintegrating. So that's what punky means. So trying to split this with an axe is absolutely useless. It doesn't work. And this might. This is what happens when it's punky too. It just doesn't split properly at all. This is what I was using. I was using punky wood uh, for my mosquito control this summer. I find stuff that would crumble. I got myself a tin can and I would just let it smolder. That worked quite well. Piling it right on the edge of the deck here. I pick up the little pieces and put them into my kindling basket. This stuff. All right, I'll show you what I've got. It's more than just from what I've been working on today. But this will do me. I got uh, my, my wood shelf inside full and I have a bunch in the porch. So I don't know, I've, I've, this is a really tight house. I have no idea how much wood I'll actually go through. All right, I'll get uh, most of this inside and then I will come back and have a ramble. Well, the wood's inside. Now let it rain and let it get cold. Hey, Kosh. It's too nice to be inside. Would have been a beautiful evening for a bonfire. I have trouble processing things. My processing centers don't work as they should. So um, I'm kind of not living anywhere right now. Like this is the cabin. I it's I have such a I don't I've never really researched memory and how memory works and all that sort of stuff but it doesn't feel like I've ever lived here like I go in there and it's I have no attachment to it it's just so weird 
but yet I had such a uh, difficult time living here. And then I go into the house and it's not mine and <laughs> I feel homeless. <laughs> it is so bizarre. You know, something, some wires are not connected up quite right. But I'm starting to dream. Uh, so I, I know that my mind, my physical brain is starting to heal. Some new neural pathways are starting to connect. You know, emotionally, whatever emotional damage was done, psychological damage, that's also starting to heal. And I'm through my dreams, I'm starting to process what happened to me 25 years ago. I'm dreaming about the psych ward now, being in the psych ward. And that's new. So, yeah. Uh, all right. I want to talk about something pretty interesting. For me, I'm not sure how many of you will be able to relate, um, probably very few, but I don't know if you find it interesting, great, and if you don't, that's fine too. Uh, there's many different facets of, we, we, every human being has many different facets of themselves. So when you get, when you embark, not embark, when you... When someone goes on a healing journey like I have, very, very interesting things can happen, do happen, not can, they do happen. And it's a combination of my spirituality, my spiritual journey, um, shamanism, Native American spirituality, energy work, And just being a very curious person and trying to be open to whatever happens and let whatever happens just flow through me. So I have just been having the most, not the most, no, 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 that's a total lie. I've been having a very challenging summer. Well, summer's over. I had a very challenging summer. Jeez Louise. I always have a challenging something or other. But this was challenging in a way that was new to me maybe like old things definitely kept bumping i kept bumping into the old things like exhaustion and um you know past couple weeks the depression has actually been pretty intense and i have to sit and i work my way through it because i know that depression is just an energy it's not something that i need to sit in and for the first time ever in my life, I'll wake up. No, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> Bear with me. I've woken up for years and years and years and years and absolutely years wanting to die, you know, and I've been away from that for a while. And the past two weeks, you know, I've been waking up in the mornings and yeah, pretty much just wanting to die. Feeling like my mornings are a uh, dark night of the soul. Like, it's been that intense and I have sat down and worked at getting myself out of that energy. That's what's new to me. I've never been able to do that before. I've just had to literally ride out the depression for however long it lasts, whether it's a few hours, days, weeks, months, or years. You know, that being said, I just, I haven't been feeling well, you know, I haven't been feeling well physically. And there's just something that's not, seems like it's just hasn't been quite clicking for me, you know. I'm, I'm exploring new ideas, like I am soul. Um, I'm trying to integrate different things. I've been like, pushing a little bit at different things and to see, you know, is, is, is that, to see what gives, because I have just been sitting with this heaviness for months. And I've been sitting in this exhaustion for months. And I've been sitting in lack of fear and tr lack of fear. I mean, sorry, not lack of fear. 
I, I want lack of fear. I've been sitting with lack of faith and trust. And it bothers me. It really bothers me. So I've been like trying to get to the bottom of it, trying to figure out what the root is and just kind of spinning my wheels a little bit. At the same time, being very gentle with myself. And working at non-attachment and non-judgment. And it's been a very, it's been a very interesting process. Like I feel like I don't even know what I'm working through. I'm working through something. I can feel it, and it's it's a pretty big one, but I don't even know what it is. It's and I usually know what I'm working through. And I, I usually do it quite intentionally, but this go round. I'm not sure. Anyway, so I was sitting at the beach today, uh, reading Jamie Sams's book, Dancing the Dream, The Seven Sacred Paths of Human Transformation. And I had started reading chapter five, or the, not chapter five, I had started reading path five, which is above. And I finished that and then I went on to chapter six. And it was like a whole bunch of things just went, you know, it's like, oh, okay, so that's why I haven't been feeling good. And that's why I'm just sitting in exhaustion. And it's like, that's really good to know. And the fifth path is where you, you marry or you merge heaven and earth. I'm way out of focus. Uh, it's it's kind of like, I see it as an integrating soul and body soul mind heart body where it all just starts to connect and become one and she was saying okay and the fifth path of initiation is also where you work at um altered states of consciousness where you it's not just willy-nilly you make like a practice out of it and you you become impeccable with it and that's something that um I know that I, I've been called to work at it since March, like in a very intentional manner, and I, I have, and it just really, I don't think it's been going anywhere. <laughs> but, yeah, and then she also said that in the fifth path, you are going to start, um, I forget what her exact words were, like uh, wake up receptors or new receptors are going to start to come online, or you're going to start forming new neural pathways, that sort of thing. So that takes a lot of energy. So a third of my energy is going to that. And then a third of my energy is going to like learning new things and just letting new things, like integrating the new things. And she says, this will only go as, as quickly, it'll only progress for the amount of physical energy that you actually have. Well, I haven't had any physical energy lately, and I've definitely been noticing that, you know, I'm not I'm not in my power. Um I'm not feeling energy move through me. It's not coming, it's not really coming into me, it's not coming through me, it's not really leaving me. And that's really, really odd for me because that's been happening to me for a lot of years, and I haven't been having a lot of uh i don't know what i don't know what people call it like supernatural experiences i guess like i don't often go into spontaneous healings or light language or anything like that and yeah so i've just i've just sort of shut everything down because i don't have the physical energy and she says that's that's just what happens. I'm like, okay, that's really good to know. That's really good to know. You know, this, uh, this is all starting to make the threads are starting to come together a little bit, right? It's really good to know. And then I started reading chapter six and I wasn't sure that I, anything with chapter six would resonate with me because, uh, I'm really, really solidly in path five, not chapter path number five. But we can, and I'm really solidly 
doing some uh, path three work now too, you know, um, and it's not linear. It's everything's a circle and you can do several different paths at once. So definitely I'm on three, definitely I'm on five. But I was reading chapter six and it's about uh, non-duality. And that's something that I have been embracing more and more and really working at uh, non-attachment and non-judgment. And I, I've, I've been talking more about it in my videos as well. You know, hold everything loosely. You know, don't get attached. Practice non-attachment. Practice non-judgment. And also my capacity to love all is, is increasing a lot. And it feels really nice. And this is something that a lot of people don't understand and I get it. It's part of the healing journey. It took me, I don't know, 44 years to figure it out. So if this doesn't resonate with you, that's fine. You know, if you continue on the healing journey and you get to this spot, you will eventually someday understand it. You know, I, I spent so many years listening to people talk about things that I had no concept of and they didn't make any sense to me. I'm like, whatever, man. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's just shit. And I got further along in my journey and I'd listen to them, listen to them again and suddenly went, oh, a light bulb went off. Oh, okay. So like I've, I've worked through enough stuff. I've shed enough layers. I've healed enough that I'm ready to understand. It's, it's a journey. It's a path. You know, we step by step by step. We don't just get from here to here in one leap. It's like, I don't know, 10 million little steps. I don't know. It's, it's, it takes a long time. It seems. So non-duality means that there is we I don't see things as good or bad as I don't I don't see things as good or evil. I see us all as equal. You know whether I know I know this is harsh for lots of people but whether you're a rapist, a career criminal, a murderer, a uh, Saint Teresa, Jesus, Buddha, me, everyone's equal, you know, yeah, that, that's been quite the concept for me to wrap my mind around. Here's something to think on. So, um, if you believe in reincarnation, where we come back for a lifetime after lifetime after lifetime, if you believe that you are an infinite soul, we've been everything, guys. I've killed people. I've been in jail. I've been every single color. You know, I've probably been aborted. I've probably have aborted. I've 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 probably had 13 kids. I've probably had I've been like incapable of having kids. I've been female. I've been male. I've been everything, you know. So if you hate someone for what they've done, you are turning that hate back on yourself. You are hating yourself because you are an infinite soul. The murderer in me, <laughs> in whatever lifetime that is, is, still part of me, you know, like I and and I don't I think not totally 100% sure of that, but you know, it, I I we have the capability of unlocking our memories. It's just, it's too much for our finite minds to handle. So uh, most of us don't know anything about our past lives. And some do. I, I don't have any ideas. Okay, so then uh, another thing on the sixth path was she, that's the below direction. So there's like you ground into Mother Earth. and she talked about grounding and grounding and grounding. And I'm like, I'm sitting on the beach. My shoes are on because it wasn't sand. It was rock. And it was just, a, it was nice, but it was a bit too chilly to sit there in bare feet. So I, I took my hand and I just put it onto a stone beside me. It was, I don't know, like this big. And I got oh, an incredible 
surge of energy. I'm like, oh, okay, this hasn't happened in so, so long. And it's like, oh, something's moving through me. And it just, it felt nice. And I'm like, I do my whole shaking thing. And what happens? And it's like, I started giggling. And I was just sitting there on the beach and shaking and laughing to myself and, you know, hoping that no one was going to come around the corner and, uh, <laughs> and like, think I was having a seizure or something. And I could feel things rearranging themselves. I could feel my mind doing stuff. I could feel something in my heart shifting. And I just sat there. And it was so nice. It was It's like a spontaneous healing. And I read a little bit more in the book. And I put my hand on that rock again. And I got like another surge of energy. And I got up. And I felt like a totally different woman. It's just... It's insanity, but yet it's not. Because when you believe that everything is energy and everything can be shifted in an absolute second, which I do. It's just, you know, thank you. I receive with open hands. I'm so, so incredibly grateful. I will take, I will take it. I will receive it with gratitude. <laughs> and I did. And I walked out of there. It was a strenuous hike back because I took a different path and I felt fine. And I came back here and I just, I was singing on the way back. There's no hint of depression it's just yeah like an, an instant shift instant instantaneous shift and it's like oh i've been waiting <laughs> and then i have physical energy i came and i split some wood and i stacked it all and guys for the past weeks i have i have I've been feeling quite sick actually and yeah so I just wanted to share that with you and I think if there's anything that you get from this it's that there's always hope you know most people don't make it past I think it's the fourth pass fourth path well I think it's maybe the third path. The majority of people in society today are on the third path. And it's a really difficult, really long, dark, treacherous path. And it's the path that lasts the longest for everyone. But just keep on, you know, be curious. So even though, even though what I'm talking about doesn't resonate with you and it doesn't make sense, just know that a few short years ago, I didn't understand any of this either. And I didn't really have any interest in understanding it because when you're at the kindergarten level and someone's talking to you like at a master's level, you're just like, fuck off, man. <laughs> okay. So it's interesting that part of the sixth path is, is accepting people and walking beside people where they're at and accepting them for who they are. And I have already been trying to do that very conscientiously. You know, I, I don't want to be hoity toity. I don't want to talk at a master's level. I'm just, some of you will understand. And for those of you who understand, this is exciting, you know, and for those of you who don't, who don't understand, maybe you can get a little bit of hope that just a very normal, Schluff. I mean, I'm not a schluff. What am I? I'm not even normal. Let's not even call me normal. Um, uh, not below average. <laughs> a poverty-stricken woman with some pretty uh, serious physical limitations. Someone who's who has had quite the past. The past does not define me. The past does not define you. Okay, it doesn't. So be curious, keep chipping away at it, and go sit underneath a tree. 
turn off the phone, turn off the computer, turn off the distractions, and go sit underneath a tree, go sit, sit on the beach, hold open your hands, and just every day say, you know what, I, I'm ready, I'm ready for what's coming my way, I'm I want to change. I desire to change. I'm going to be curious. I don't know. Come up with your own little mantra. Write it down and make it a ritual of going outside and saying it. All right, my loves. I'm going to sit here for a while and enjoy the last summer night. Oh, man. Oh, man. Well, I feel like I need summer to be over. So it's bitter, bittersweet. You know, uh, if I now have the energy, then I will be able to get, get stuff done this week. Get my get the yard ready for winter. Get myself moved into the house. And, and then spend the next months just uh, going deeper and deeper inside of myself and continuing to bloom like the beautiful I don't know what flower am I not a rose mm, maybe a purple columbine I've, I've seen they're here in the wild I've, like they're very rare here I don't know if they're common elsewhere but the first time I've seen purple columbine was here and it was in the wild and I've seen them like three times in the past two years and they're exquisite and they're, they're very delicate, but at the same time, kind of hardy. Anyways, I could expound a long time on that, but I won't. <laughs> I love you all. So, so much, guys. I love you so, so much. Until next time.